worked well kind of from an internal standpoint from a reporting standpoint external reporting we would typically would need to do an adjusting entry basically to make it correct as of the end of the period so that's going to be it now i'm going to make this a little bit smaller so i can see the record button at the bottom so there's the record button i'm going to save it and i'm going to close it is everything at oh wait a sec change the date you're so lucky you fixed that because you can't really so this is going to be from 060127 cash okay everything else is good let's save it and close it the payment date should be on or before the sales order date well what was the sales order date on for crying out loud let me close this out let me let me let me close this something has gone horribly horribly wrong uh the pen i'm going to clear this and then close it so the sales order date says okay it's on 6 2 27. okay so let me let me say i'm going to say receive payment uh you won't be able to okay i know that and then it's going to be 50 and let's say this happened on 06 03 27. is that okay with you quickbooks is that okay with you all right so fifty dollars let's do it all right let's put this back up to 150 and then we have it so we can close this back out okay so let's so here we have the internal documents look good there's our payment we expect later that we can go and order the surfboard and then enter the invoice that we can apply to the payment if we go to the balance sheet what happened over here we went into undeposited funds instead of into our checking account but it's still kind of like cash i'm not going to get into the undeposited funds thing right now but the other side did not go to a decrease of the of the accounts receivable which it did before because the sub ledger dealt with the customer instead going down here to a liability account that we set up where did it go customer deposit there it is so that's great that because now it basically posts it down here properly reporting it from an accounting standpoint however it is still a little bit more confusing because now we have to have two sub ledgers to deal with the customers in other words if i go to my reports up top and i go to my company and financials no my customers and receivables and i look at my uh what is it customer balance detail report customer balance detail then i don't have anything in here for that customer yet because i haven't entered an invoice i entered a payment only so that's kind of fine because it, you would think well it shouldn't be in there because we don't it's not an ar yet it's not an accounts receivable related thing but look at the last customer we had this for where we had this payment happen first and then we applied the invoices to it the negative ar is wrong but from just an understanding what's going on side of things a bookkeeping side of things this is pretty clear right uh it's kind of, so that's kind of nice whereas when you look at this uh when you have this other liability account then there's going to be another sub ledger related to the liability account it's not it's not going to be in one place right so so now i've got the customer deposit is also going to have a sub ledger although this is a liability it's tied to the customers whereas usually liability accounts have sub ledgers that are tied to vendors right so now we're going to go into the customers and say this is going to be the uh where is it there's open prepayments somewhere around here there it is open prepayments so there's our 50 dollars there so that looks so that looks good but it's basically that added step so if we compare this to the last process if i go back into my customer center and think of it from an internal perspective what's the difference between these two processes well internally in here it looks much the same when i'm trying to finalize my transaction i can see what's happening right i made an estimate i made a sales order i've got the payment the payment looks like a prepayment when i make the invoice i should be able to apply the payment to it in a similar way as when we have that negative receivable which we often like call a credit right that we're going to apply to the invoice you can see that over here where the other method internally looked very nice as well same kind of concept estimate uh, we've got the sales order and then we have this $50 payment it's just that this payment was marked as a negative receivable instead of a 
instead of a positive liability. But from this side of things, the bookkeeping is pretty similar because then when I make the invoice, I could apply the payment out to it. So from this internal screen perspective, just facilitating the transactions, both of these work pretty well. So I, I like that. So if you can do that, so I kind of like the new thing that works quite well. However, it does also still lead areas for confusion for people to, to do funny things. So for example, if I go to the balance sheet over here, like you'll, if you have any experience with this undeposited funds, you'll note that that's a clearing account. It has its use, it has its functions, it's useful, but a lot of people will mess things up be because of it. it. It has another step which will mess people up sometimes. So anytime you have an added step, it could mess people up, right? The same thing is kind of true with this accounts receivable uh, being broken out now between accounts receivable and then this this other account down here for uh, for the deposits, the liability account. Now I can't find it. The liability account for the deposits right there. This The fact that we have this other account that's kind of related to receivables adds another level of kind of complexity because now somebody could post something to that account without actually going through the normal kind of process and that would may mess it up, right? And the subledger would could possibly get messed up. Uh, and when people are trying to figure out what is happening from a reports standpoint related to a customer, usually they're going to be looking at things that are related to the accounts receivable. So people have to understand that this is a liability account that is still tied uh, to a customer. Also, when we move it, when we actually make the payment and enter the invoice, QuickBooks is going to create a clearing account to facilitate that transaction, which will, which will, create, which will call a, cause a journal entry to be put in place. So again, we'll have another clearing account, which is another area where people could could cause havoc, right? They could post something to that clearing account. Uh, not as big a problem as this undeposited funds because the clearing account that they're going to put in there is just used for this one purpose. But again, it creates another transaction just which adds one more kind of complexity into the system, adds a journal entry, and it adds this other clearing account that, that could add more to the complexity as well. So I'm just trying to point out the pros and cons between the two system. It works quite well. We don't have to do an adjusting entry at the end of the month this way because you should have the liabilities properly uh, recorded. It looks very nice internally uh, in, to in order to facilitate the transactions from a bookkeeping standpoint. But you know the downside is, of course, that we have these two accounts. We've got some clearing accounts. We have an added journal entry, which uh, could add some complexity and leave you know room for people to mess something up possibly that's so but we'll continue with this transaction finish it up next time